Hey, are you having trouble getting your FTDX3000 or maybe your FT991 slash A or hey, any of the Yaesu HF rigs that have built-in sound cards and COM ports you have to access through a USB connection? Are you banging your head up against the wall? Well, you know what? This video is for you. Hi everybody, this is Stu, AG6AG. Well, if you've been following a lot of my videos, and when I talk about digital modes and interfacing the radios with the devices, I get a little, oh, oh, I stand back a little from exact configuration because everybody's configuration needs are different and different radios have way different configuration settings. Um, the number one question I get from a lot of people, though, is I notice in your video you have a Yesu whatever, and I'm trying to get it to work. Can you tell me how to get cat and audio to work on my Yesu radio? And, you know, um, I've been doing emails and trying to fill in comments and stuff like that on how to get that to work for a lot of people. So I finally decided the heck with it. I am going to go ahead and show how to interface the Yesu radios that have their uh, uh, COM ports and audio devices built in accessible through a USB interface. Um, all that really means is I'm going to show you what software you need to install to get the thing working. We'll talk about what you need to do to configure it inside Windows 10 to get the best bang for your buck. We're going to talk about menu entries and what entries you need to change. Um, and we're going to try to make it easier for you to get that Yesu 991 or that Yesu 1200 or that Yesu 3000 or uh, the new 101s or whatever to work for your digital enjoyment. All right. So with that, oh, hey, I know I ask you every time. I'll ask you one more time and probably ask you in the next video. Do me a favor and click on the subscribe button. Uh, the more subscribers I have, the more my content gets in front of people searching for ham radio related stuff. And hey, we're all Elmers out there and you can help me be a better Elmer by getting me in front of more people. Anyway, with that, this is Stu and let's get on with the show. Well, so let's get started on this. First off... Um, I want to talk a little bit about what I usually show when I'm showing digital. Um, the SignalLink USB adapter external sound card is a marvelous device and it is a simple device to set up. Um, the reality is majority of the time that I'm pushing this I'm pushing it for people that are running uh, FM uh, VHF, UHF radios to do things like packet and other kinds of digital. Um, when you start getting into the HF digital side, this actually works great, don't get me wrong, um, but you still have to do cat controls and stuff like that beyond what you really have to do with a standard VHF, UHF radio. Um, and to go a little farther down the rabbit hole, uh, a lot of the new radios, such as the new ICOMs and the new uh, Kenwoods, as well as the new uh, Yesus, support two different COM ports, as well as audio device for input and output built directly into the radio and accessible via USB. Um, one of the bigger questions I get all the time is about USB access. And I have to tell you... Um, it might drive you a little crazy, but this little USB cable here is really the new way to interface your digital devices or your digital protocols with your radio. 
Uh, and what we're going to try to show today is regardless if you have a uh, Yesu 991 or a 3000 or a 1200 or a 101 or whatever you have, if it has this USB interface, I'm going to cover the basics on getting that going. Uh, I'm going to be doing specific statements about the 991 and the 3000, which is the same pretty much as the 5000 and the 9000. Um, and actually, all the menus are pretty much the same from the standpoint of what you're going to need to set in the radio. Uh, and, you know, the configuration as well is going to be pretty much the same. Um, anyway, the most popular radio that most guys are out there spending their money on right now is the uh, 991. And this happens to be a little picture of the back side of the 991. And it's got all sorts of plugins and all sorts of stuff on it. It's got RTTY and digital and the, uh, you know, a, a, a tune adapter, linear adapter, got stuff for GPS. And also CAT, you can do a direct CAT control through that uh, uh, interface there. But the key to this is what I got circled right up there. That my friend, is the USB connection. Standard USB, just like something coming off of a printer, okay? Um, and this provides you with two separate COM ports and uh, an in and an out for audio. And uh, we're going to talk about the access of that. And, you know, by the way, it's kind of regardless, this is the back of a 3000, okay? And again, we have all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. Oh, my God. God, it's so complicated, but the reality of it is that all we really need to worry about to get going on digital is going to be that little circle right there for the USB port, all right? So, why don't we, uh, why don't we give this a shot? Now, I'm going to go ahead and change some setups so I'm able to access another computer remotely and get it captured. And we're going to walk through installing the drivers, downloading them, installing them, and the initial setup and a starting point for the sound cards. Okay, so that's next. All right, so now we kind of understand what we need to do. Now we need to do some prep on the computer to make sure that we're ready for the radio to connect to it, okay? So, ironically, with Yesu, as with most Japanese HF rigs that have a built-in sound card and uh, COM port combination, you have to download the driver from the manufacturer. When I say the manufacturer, I mean Yesu, okay, uh, in this particular case. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get going on that, all right? So... Here I am on the computer, and my first step is to go to Yesu, if I can spell it right, dot com. So, a couple things, full disclosure here. Um, I've got this hooked to the FTDX3000 just because the way my shack's laid out, it's easier to get back behind it and do stuff like that. And remember, I'm showing how to install this, and I'm doing it on a system that it's never been installed on. So, therefore, I don't want to mess with a system that has been installed on. Yeah, yeah, I'm going on too long about this. But the bottom line is this. Um, the 3000 was easier to get to than the uh, 991A. But let's talk about both. So the first thing I'm going to do is, if I'm downloading for any Yesu product, uh, I'm going to go to the HF Transceivers and Amplifiers page. And here are all the different models, right? The 710, the DX10, the DX101 uh, uh, MP, the DX101D, all, and it covers all the current radios that have the sound card COM port combo on USB, as well as the FT991. You notice there's no 3000 here, and if you're a 3000 owner, well, you know what? You're probably going to want to uh, download the one for the 3000. couple quick disclosures. On the FT991, if I click here and I go over to Files, it has an extremely simple driver install. Uh, you just click on the FT991A USB driver virtual COM port for Windows 11 and 10. And 
you know what? When you, uh, uh, or you can actually click on the FT991A SCU-17 USB driver for the virtual COM port, okay? If you click on the bottom one, you get a nice full-bodied install, very easy to put on. Um, if you click on the top one, eh, a little bit more complicated to install, but a little less weight of an install, I guess would be the best way to put it. So, look, it's a null choice for me. I could choose either one, and even though I'm running an FT991A, uh, it won't it'll work on my, it will work on my FTDX3000. Uh, but for clarity in this, and since we're doing a demo here, I'm going to go ahead and down below all these radios up here is a little thing that says archived HF transceivers and amplifiers. And if I click on that, I now have the FT991 non-A. I've got the 1200. And there is my 3000. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on files. Now, if it's been a really long time, a really long time, or you never, when you got your radio, bothered to upgrade the firmware in it, I strongly recommend you do that. It is a complicated process. Uh, you need to read the upgrade manual and everything else. If you have any issues or problems doing the stuff that I'm talking about in this video, go back and upgrade that firmware, okay? Uh, and that is all right here. Uh, this is uh, FTDX3000, all current firmware, including the uh, new update main version, okay? And this came out in uh, May 12th of 2020. So if you haven't updated your firmware since uh, the 12th of May 2020, you may want to pop up and do that. And again, they have the firmware update manual and everything else. So enough said about that, all right? You notice they had the uh, SCU-17 installation manual. And then they have the update firmware information manual. And then right here, interestingly enough, they have the FTDX USB uh, driver virtual COM port for Windows 10 and 11. Pretty much the same driver they had back there on the FT991A. Uh, We're going to click on that, and my system's going to automatically download it. What I'm going to do is I see my downloaded file down here in the bottom. Uh, if you're running um, Edge for your browser, it would be up here in the top somewhere. Uh, I could click it right here, or I can go ahead and click on the little folder icon and go to downloads and there it is right there and this little zipper icon thing tells me that it is a zipped file. Uh, now, first thing I want to do is I want to extract it. There is no installer in this so I can't really rely on Windows figuring out how to get this unzipped and installed so I do have to extract it. Okay, when I click extract all, it gives me a location which is a directory under downloads, which is fine with me. And it says show extracted folder when completed. That is checked, and that is the behavior I want. I'm going to go ahead and click on extract, and it pops up a window that looks just like my zip window. However, it doesn't have a way to extract, so that way I know it's an extracted folder. Now, there is, uh, uh, what is it, Scilab Serial, okay, in here a couple times. One of them actually has what looks like a bunch of uh, little printers, and the other one has what uh, appears to be a gear on a blank piece of paper. That, if I hover over it, is a setup information file, okay? I want to highlight that by clicking it one time, and then I'm going to right hand mouse click it, okay, with the right button, and under here it gives me the option to install this. I'm going to say install. It's going to tell me, oh, you know, I don't know who the publisher is, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to say, that's fine, go ahead and open it. It says, are you sure you want to run this? And I'm going to say yes. And the operation was completed successfully. I now have a driver for that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to close this and I'm going to close this and I'm going to I'm going to close my browser. Well, look at that. And now what am I going to do? Well, 
I am going to plug my radio in. Now my radio is powered up. It's all set to go, and I am going to take the USB plug that's coming out of the back of it, this cable, and plug it into the computer, and, oh, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So I'm looking over at the radio right now, making sure nothing's happened. I might hear beeps. I might not hear beeps. It, it all depends the way my uh, PC is set up. I'm not hearing any beeps. That doesn't mean that something didn't happen. And this is how I'm going to verify that. Down here, I'm going to right-click with the right mouse button. I'm going to right-click the uh, uh, Start menu. And I get a little different menu. And down, I think it's item number six is Device Manager. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to look around. And let me make this a little bigger, okay, so we all can see it. Uh, There we go. All right. And here I'm going to go ahead and I am going to uh, click on ports. And I now have three ports, three of them. Okay. I have a Intel Active Management port. I don't know what that is. Um, but I have two Silicon Lab Dual ports, okay? Two UARTs, I have a COM4, which is an enhanced port, and I have a COM5, which is a standard port. Now, the one I'm interested in right now is going to be my enhanced port, and that is COM4. So I am going to write COM4 down so I remember it. Um, and let's just really quick talk, really quickly, what is an enhanced serial port versus a standard serial port? Well, in the context that we're talking about right now, the enhanced serial port is the serial port that is used to do cat controls, in other words, change frequencies, key the receiver, get information back out, bi-directional communication, yada, 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 yada. I asked uh, the, uh, the cat control question on the enhanced port. It gives me an answer. Very nice. The standard COM port is really just designed to tie into RIDI, something like that. And... It does have a feature that we may use. Uh, typically, we only use it, though, for the most part, uh, with software that doesn't really understand uh, how to use a standard CAT control to uh, send a push to talk. Um, or the other use, of course, would be if I was using something like Bara FM or another program, possibly uh, sound modem, in FM, right? on VHF, not HF, using it to key the radio, okay, by bringing the voltage up on the RTS port, okay? So that's basically the only thing I've ever used it for, and I do use it for that with uh, VARA, and, uh, but uh, we can go into that another time. Anyway, so we have both those COM ports. I've written down what the advanced port is, okay, or the enhanced. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look. I should have a sound device now, too, an extra one. And look at that, USB audio codec right there. So that is in addition to all the rest of the stuff I have on here, okay? It created that when we hooked up to the Yesu. Now, interestingly enough, if I hadn't installed those serial drivers, I would have still had the audio device, but I wouldn't have had the COM ports, okay? All right, with that, let me get back to kind of a normal screen here. And uh, what I'm going to do next is we're going to go through the menu stuff on the radio itself. We're going to go through it, and we're going to make our settings on that and get it all set up and happy as a camper to get back to working with the radio on digital setup. Well, okay, let's go ahead and get started on some menu settings here. Now, full disclosure, this is the FTDX3000. Uh, the reason I'm focused on this radio is it has a bigger screen, a little bit better display than the 991. Uh, just makes it easier to film. 
the majority of what we're talking about is the same. As a matter of fact, um, the menu numbers are really close. They're in the same area on both radios. Uh, also, you know, they're, um, they may be the same or a little bit different if you've got a 5,000 or a 9,000 or a 1,200 uh, or a 101. I mean, you know, but the bottom line is that the concept of what you're changing is the same. So what we're going to look at here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit menu and pop the menu up here. And I want you to take special notice that the default items or the default settings over here on that uh, right-hand side, those are all blue. Anything that I've set differently, okay, is in white. And there's other things besides what we're going to cover that I may have changed at one time or another. Um, but just assume, if we're not talking about that setting, that we're using the default setting for our setup. And I'll try to go a little bit in depth on this, but I could spend hours talking about the menus inside these radios. And I really don't want to do that. And I don't think you want to hear it. So let's go ahead and scroll down and let's get our cat setting set up first. So I'm going to just hit the down button. I'm going to kind of scroll through this rather quickly. Uh, get past display and the keyer. You know, I said I changed contest number, but you don't need to worry about that. That's only if you're using a keyer. Uh, we're going past general. Uh, general, I set my monitor level at about 25, uh, but that's just going to be, you know, the monitor is just what allows you to hear back what you're sending. And in digital, that can be helpful because you can actually hear the audio tones that the radio is sending. It gives you a better idea of what's actually going out. Um, but let's keep going here to cat control section. And there we are in general. And it really picks up right here where we have cat selection. And cat select, it's set to USB by default. And that's where you want your cat control being pointed at. The cat rate I set to 38 uh, 400. And the reason I do that is I run some software that requires me to do that. The default for this is 4,800 uh, bits per second, okay, uh, or baud. I like to see it at 38.4 for all the stuff I run. You can run this up as fast as you want to as long as your software can keep up with the speed and your computer can keep up with the speed you're trying to move the data at. 38.4 uh, or 38.4K uh, is a pretty good choice here, okay? Um, you also notice that I have my cat RTS disabled. Um, I do that so it's not doing handshakes all the time. It allows me to do some other stuff. You can either have this enabled or disabled, okay? It works both ways, but it will have to do with settings that you do in your software later. So it's important to uh, make sure that you know what this is set to. I set mine to disable, and I just remember that with all my settings and all my software. Okay, And again, we're talking about baud rate. This goes back to the days of modems. Okay, So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you've been playing with computers long enough to remember serial ports and modems, you're going to be fine in here. If not, eh, do a little research and just uh, go generally by some of the settings that I've chosen here. Okay, So we'll keep going down. And now we're starting to get into different settings for different protocols, right? Or different modes. CW. I'm going to keep going until, oh, PC Keen in CW. And this is really interesting, okay? Um, we talked about the enhanced and the standard COM port that is available in the drivers in your system, right? Um, this... PC Keen RTS has to do with that standard COM port, okay? What that means is if you have the RTS go high, right, on that standard COM port, it's going to key the radio, okay? So just keep that in mind. I like to have this uh, for certain things that I do uh, with... Uh, Oh, uh, Winlink protocols, but that's a whole different thing, and we're going to probably get into that later. All I'm trying to do is get you set up the easiest to get this configured so you can use it, and then we can start looking at individual programs. But until you've got this working, 
looking at the programs is going to do you no good. Anyway, um, if you're not using your radio with a keyer, uh, using it with CW, um, you know, I'd suggest saying this to RTS, but it's completely up to you. So let's keep going. Now we're getting into the meat of it here, right? We've got data mode. Data mode, we want others, okay? And I'm going to come back up to this, and I'm going to just, I'm going to play with it a little because I want you to see, right? It's not like you have a lot of choices here. You have PSK or other. The default is PSK. That's where you want to be, okay? You want to be there. Um, again, the default is PSK. Now, you notice that I've also changed my uh, uh, data offset, okay, other DSP single sideband, right? Uh, I change it by 1500 hertz, okay? Why do I do that? You know, to be honest with you, I don't really remember why. I think it had to do with isolating exactly where the frequency was going to read when I was using WSJTX, okay? My recommendation, set to 1500 hertz and then change your uh, other shift to 1500 hertz as well, okay? Everything seems to work with that setting as far as what the frequency is uh, that is being displayed and what frequency you're on, okay? So, again, in the data modes, we have data mode, others, other D, uh, DISP or display, we're altering by 1500 hertz. Other shift, we're altering by 1500 hertz, okay? And let's keep going now. Oh, here we go. And this is also important, okay? Data in select, you need to choose USB, Okay, what are our choices here? Well, we've got data or USB, and we want our data in select to be USB. All right, now let's keep going. Uh, so, data out level, I have mine set to 15. This defaults to 50, by the way. But this is kind of like the sound card volume setting or the recording level setting. And it at 50, it's just I have to turn sound cards and outputs down so low on the computer that it just, I can't fine tune it. So I like to bring it down to, for me, 15 works really well, depending on the computer and some other things. You need to may need to change that, okay, vary it, but... 15 would be a good starting point for you. And just remember, keep in mind, that this is the audio level of the sound card, basically. Okay, so by adjusting this, you're adjusting what audio is getting in and out of the system. Okay? Um, VOX, we're, we're not using VOX. We're going to have, uh, in the way I set it up, we're going to actually have, uh, whatchamacallit, the... Um, Oh, um, cat controls key the radio, so I don't want v uh, uh, VOX settings on or them turned on or whatever. I can leave the default on all that. I'm not running FM for data. That would be something we're going to discuss a little bit on the 991, and that'll be a little bit of a supplement in a little bit. All right. Um, and then, you know, to be honest with you, pretty much that's all you need to set. I mean, the rest of the stuff that I have set here is just stuff for me that I use on regular operation, right? Um, anyway, with that, that kind of covers the menus, all right? All right, so let's work this one real quick. Um, we're going to go ahead and start looking at what has changed. This is, of course... Uh, the 991 and I keep going and going and going and going and what I'm looking for obviously is the cat stuff which let's see up oh, there we go all right so I'm not worried about the GPS or the RS-232 rate or anything like that at this point 
Uh, but what I do care about is, of course, the cat rate, which is, again, 38.4. And I don't think there was anything else that I uh, needed to set on that. Oh, yeah, of course, I disabled the cat RTS as well on the 991. Let's keep going. And I know I'm blowing through this rather fast, but... And data mode, number 62 here, set for others, right? We change that. And again, our other DS, DISP and our other shift is 1500 hertz. And uh, low cut frequency is off and high cut frequency is off on this. That just gives me a broader range of uh, frequency span. Um, and then, of course, uh, my data in select. In this case, is rear, which is the... Uh, um, I can set that to rear or front, and that means I could put it in the mic if I put it in front, okay? Um, but for my push to talk data, I set RTS here, okay? Uh, the same way I did with the uh, CW on the other device, uh, the 3000. And for the data port select, of course, I'm selecting USB, just like the other one, okay? Um, and... Now, I run FM packet and other stuff on this, uh, but some of the settings that I, you know, want to make sure are in here is my FM push to talk. I want to make sure that it's set to RTS. Again, <clears throat> when we talk about that, we aren't talking about cat controls. We are actually talking about the setting that we're using on the standard COM port, not the enhanced COM port, Okay. Uh, so just bear that in mind when we go to our software setup. And let's see, we're going to continue here. Uh, FM Packet TX Gain 25. So what does that mean? Okay, so that is basically the settings that we were talking about on the other unit, but FM, because I use this a lot for FM digital, okay? Uh, packet mode, that's all default. Uh, my, uh, oh, now we're into repeater shifts. I'm not sure if there's anything else that I really need to change on this. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, so the single sideband, of course, right? Uh, again, we've got the same settings here. Um, out, RTS for push to talk. USB support setting for single sideband. And I think that actually about covers it. Let me just roll through these. There's a lot of menu items on this radio. Uh, uh, Vox Select Data. It, eh, I'm not using Vox, so it really doesn't matter. Data Vox Gain. It doesn't matter because it's not turned on. Uh, none of that matters until I turn it on. Uh, but you know what? I'm back at the beginning. So <clears throat> there you go. Real quick in a nutshell from the 991 owners. Okay. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, step into software. Well, okay, so first things first, let's get our sound devices set up properly, okay? After all, we now have a new microphone and a new sound card. Um, the easiest way to do this, well, let me rephrase easiest way to do this. The way that seems to work the best for me is for me to go in under system and I'll go in here under sound and over here it may be on the side it may be down at the bottom hard to say is your sound card control uh, first things first I'm going to change my default audio here on the left I'm going to change it to the speakers and then to the microphone array that is part of the laptop now why am I doing that well I don't want it playing noises out to my radio right? So I'm going to select those things as the output device. Now I'm going to go over here to sound control panel, and this might be something that looks a little bit more traditional. I'm going to close this, and I'm not sure if I can do this. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Um, oh yeah, there we go. All right, so from here, what I'm going to do is I've got my speakers here, and it says USB codec, the first thing I'm going to do for this is I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to click on properties and I'm going to make sure that my settings are where I want them to be. 
So my levels, I don't want this at 100%. Okay, I probably want to start someplace at about, oh, I don't know, 70, okay? Um, the reason for that is that I don't want to overdrive the sound card, right? We change some of the audio levels on the radio, but let's, in keeping with that, let's get to about 70 here on this, and let's go to enhancements and disable all the enhancements. Why are we doing that? Guess what? We're doing digital. We're doing 8K right here. We're doing this little volume, so we don't need all this stuff turned on. Um, as far as advanced goes, this should be fine. And, of course, any uh, Sparticle sound format we want turned off. We'll go ahead and apply that and say OK. Now let's look at our recording devices. Ooh, interesting. we got some audio on there. Why do you think that is? Well, because we've got the radio on. It's actually picking stuff up. So notice that the default is the microphone array, okay, which is on the device, the computer itself. I'm going to go to the USB microphone. I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to do the same thing, okay? Listen, I'm going to make sure this is turned off. Uh, levels. I might crank this up just a little. Let's go to about 66, just to, you know, kind of keep it. And where am I pulling these numbers out? Well, I'm, I'm looking at someplace between, oh, uh, two-thirds and three-quarters of max level. Uh, should give me what I'm looking for. Under Advanced, all this is fine. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to click OK. Well, all right, let's see. Where are we at? We've got our audio level set. We know our COM port. We know our audio devices. We know all these different things that we're going to be able to set up here. What do we need to do now? Um, well, I think we need to test it. So how are we going to do that? I know I'm going to install a piece of software to check the digital. But, but what piece of software? Well, it needs to be a piece of software that I can install and almost guarantee there will be somebody out there to answer me. Um, hmm. What digital mode would do that? Also, you know, I need a piece of software that isn't going to cost me any money because it may not be a mode I want to run later. Well, gee, I think I only have one choice, right? WSJTX. Let's run FT8 and see if we can get this working on this 3000 on this brand new setup, huh? Why not? So... Let's go ahead. We will go to WSJTX. Just doing a search here. It takes me to, oh, look at that, Princeton Physics. I'm going to just scroll down here. What am I going to do? I need to download the latest version right there, the 64-bit version. So I'll go ahead and download that. Now, I'm going to click to run it, but you're going to see me turn away from uh, the screen for a little bit because the stuff that I run to do this with um, eh, it has a couple interesting idiosyncrasies. One of them is that on certain installs, I do have to uh, take my uh, eyes off my recording computer and put it on the actual PC that we're doing captures off of and just go through the install. So that's what I'm doing right now. The reason I'm facing away is I'm actually looking at a laptop over here that all this fun stuff's hooked to, okay? Uh, let's see. And uh, I'm not going to run it because I'm kind of in a loop here. All right. So here's what we got. We've got WSJTX, and we're going to double-click it, and I do not want to see that anymore. Uh, let's drag this down. We'll drag this down to the bottom here, and I'm going to span this out. And, uh, the, you know, there's a couple things that drive me nuts about this. This is just me, but I don't like running averages, and I don't like running cumulative. Now, uh, with all... Oh, and my gosh, I don't want to flatten it either. Okay. So I got this thing open, uh, so I need to configure it. Let me go over here to File, Settings, and I'm just going to get enough in here that I can test it. There's my call sign, my grid square, uh, 
uh, make sure I'm in, you know, because I want, if the person gets a cue, I want them to get all the right information, of course. Um, I'm going to put a blank line, uh, display distance of miles. I'm kind of, this is kind of how I set my stuff up, but not necessarily. Uh, I do it a little bit differently most of the time, and sometimes I'll do it differently. Uh, oh my gosh, you know, just uh, <laughs> between setups. Let's see here. All right. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go to radio and actually I'm going to go to audio first and I'm going to grab my codex here. There's my microphone USB codec and there is my speaker USB codec. All right. And now I'm going to go to the radio and set up my cat controls. Now, if I look a little flustered after doing all these videos, this is actually the last shot of the night for me. And I've done it a few times. I've had to roll software back and do all sorts of stuff because I found all sorts of problems, not with the setup. Believe it or not, I found all sorts of problems with WSJTX. And uh, I never knew they were there because I usually run a different interface. But it, anyway, long story short, a couple things right off the bat. First thing is if I select... The 3000 and uh, I look over here and the COM port right COM port 4 that's what we found Oop. let me select COM port 4 and of course our speed we set that on the menu right that was 38 400 I leave all the rest of the stuff default and change this over to cat I should just be able to click test cat and it should work but this is what I got and I looked through it, and I looked through it, and I looked through it, and I couldn't find why. All my settings look great. And then I did another search on the internet, and I found out that the FTDX3000 rig for this particular program is broken. And they're working on fixing it. Yes, pull my hair out, right? So let's go ahead now that I've set it to the 5,000 instead and test my cat and will you look at that, okay? Now I'm gonna test my push to talk, all right? Oh, I should show you what's going on. I keep looking over this way, but I'm actually looking at the radio. Let me, uh, let me pull up the uh, uh, actual radio here just behind me and get rid of me so you can see it. <clears throat> Now, what we should see is, well, let me plug me back in here. What the heck? What you should see is over on the far side where there's that green thing over there. You may not be able to read it unless you full screen it, but that says busy. That just means it's in receive. When I hit test push to talk, it should go into transmit and turn red. TX, and it's red, so we know that's working, okay? I'm not going to change my mode to USB, data, packet, split operation, anything. I just want to do a really quick little test. Uh, let's see, anything else I want to change? I'm going to, yeah, well, let me have it prompt to log me. Um, and I think the rest, oh, we'll clear it. Nah, we'll leave that. And frequencies, colors, and advanced should all be fine. So I'm going to click OK. Now, interestingly enough, I'm looking here, and I am not seeing anything, but I'm also looking and see that, seeing that I'm on 14078. So I need to actually select the right mode. And there we go. I, I'm getting some stuff. Will you look at that? All right. So I'm going to click over here on CQ only, but I also want to tune. So let me uh, come over here. I'm going to set my uh, carrier level to 10. Wow, look at all that. Of course, hey, what can I say, right? And I'm going to click on tune, and I just want to verify on my tuner. Let's take a shot up on that, that my tuning's good. And there I am. Okay. Um, that actually looks pretty good. I don't think I need to change a thing. But I will go down here again and take a look, and I'm going to look at my ACL. Let me hit tune, and up. Oh, I'm popping up a little much, popping up a little much. I'm going to drop it down uh, right there, and then I can bring my power up a little bit, right? Uh, maybe there we go. Come up a little more up. All right. Bring my power up a little more. 
All right, right about there. That puts me, oh, I'm going to say right at about, oh, 40 watts, huh? Yeah, well, we'll call that 40 watts. Oh, I'm swinging around the right. Right there. That's about 40 watts. Awesome. All right. So it looks like I'm pretty much set up. I'm looking over here. We can get rid of this here. All right. And I'm looking up here. God, beautiful waterfall. Let's get a little audio just for fun. Oh, yeah. Isn't that a hideous sound? All right, we'll turn the audio back down. All right, so let's see if I can actually make a connection here. Um, and I'm going to hedge my bets as much as possible. I'm going to go for the closest station I can find. So let me do this. We'll make this a little bigger. And... Uh, let's see how it is on the other side. Let it roll. I only got to wait 15 seconds for a whole nother group here, right? All right. I'm going to shoot for this guy right here. Okay, and I'm pushing out about 40 watts. You might be hearing the little noise there. Let me, uh, I'm going to clear out a monitor. But hey, look at that. I'm transmitting. Everything seems to be working just fine. Let's see. Let's see if it actually makes a connection. Uh. Oh, got him. Got him. Oh my, you know what? This is DX. Three Delta Alpha Juliet Tango. Where is he? RH, RH82? Where is that? Oh, I'm going to have to look him up. I am. Let's see if I can complete this thing, though. Up. In memory of Zorro, it's a special event call. That's neat. That's neat. It's in Fiji. And I got him. 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 All right. I got a special event call in Fiji. All right. So what does this tell me? Right? It tells me this works. It all works. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. So now if I want to set up a different protocol, I can do that. So we're going to take a look at a couple other setups just to kind of check them out. And I'm going to switch everything back to my main rig because I just wanted to demonstrate all this to you. Okay, so that's the way you set it up. Now let's take a look at some variations on those settings. Okay. Well, I got my rig back on my main computer. Uh, makes my life a little bit easier now. I'm not doing things on other computers hooked up remotely and trying to show you like the first experience with all this. We're done with first experiences, right? Because now we've got it working. We've actually proven that it works. So let's go ahead and jump into the configuration of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you a few different setups, I'm hoping, uh, just to give you a primer. This in no way is in-depth on how to get these programs up and going, but my goal here is to center in on cam, um, cat controls and hooking the audio up. So let's jump into that real quick. Let's see here. So I want to go in here to FL Digi, and I'm going to go to Configure. And I'm going to go to the configure dialog. And in here, I'm going to go ahead 
and set up my cat control. Now it's usually buried in here under rig control. You're gonna notice something really interesting is there are a bunch of different things here. FR rig, cat, all sorts of stuff, right? GPIO, hardware push to talk, C media push to talk. Here's Hamlib. Now, why do I use Hamlib? Well, because it gives me full the full av availability of what commands are typically available in cat. So this is really fairly simple to set up. I've got to say, all right, name my radio, and guess what? In FL Digi, hey, the FTDX3000 definition actually works the way it's supposed to. Now, in this particular case, my radio is on COM13. That is my enhanced COM port for my um, FTDX3000. So I set this to COM13, and now baud rate stop bits is 1.0. Uh, you'll notice that I've got no DTR, RTS, none of this is checked. Uh, audio on auxiliary port is checked, and then, of course, my push-to-talk via Hamlib is checked. So, in order to get this to work at that point, I'll uncheck it here, but I have to check it, and it will verify if it can see the radio, okay? And I do that over here by hitting Initialize, and bada-bing, bada-boom, it was able to see the radio because that went away and Hamlib is still checked. All right. So that's done. So now what does that mean? Well, basically that means that this uh, uh, program is now able to control the radio. And I, it should uh, allow frequency changes, all sorts of stuff like that. The other part of this that I have to do associated with this radio uh, or any radio with a built-in sound card, or as a matter of fact, even if you were using this with a uh, oh, sound modem, is to go ahead and set my devices under sound card. And on this particular computer, this is USB 3 that these audio devices are associated with. And you see I've got them there, right there, all set to go. Um, there are really no additional changes that I need to make on this for my uh, setup. And uh, if you're just doing the native kind of stuff, that should do it. Always, always click save on this and go ahead and close. So now we should be able to see I'm going to reach over to the radio. I'm going to spin the dial and I'm spinning it up and see that right up there. Yeah, my frequency is changing, right? So we want to go back to 14070. And come on, come on. Ah, there we are. Right on frequency. All right. And, of course, my waterfall's active. Hey, it looks like there's somebody out there right now. I'll just click and see if I can decode him. Let's see if he comes back up. And I'm looking at my squill. She's, these guys are pretty weak. Ah, here he comes. Back to you, old man. Ah, very good. All right, so this is working. Uh, again, I don't have a good set of ears on this, so it's, it's not great, but it is working. All right, so let me go ahead back here and shrink this back down to normal size. That's all there is for this. Let's take a look at another setup. Here we go. Well... All right, that was FL Digi. So let's try another one. You know what? I get a lot of questions about how do I set up um, Vara HF in Winlink. So let's just do a real quick review of that and what the computer settings are for that. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go over here and select Vara HF Winlink from the pull down. I'll click on this and it should pull up. There we go. It's pulling up the stuff here. Uh, there's Vara. I open that. It usually launches Minimize. Um, okay, so let's see here. I'm going to go to Settings and let's take a look at our radio setup. So here's the radio setup. What do we got? Well, um, basically, I have. Uh, 
my radio model as a Yesu FT2000. Now, I'm on a FTDX3000. Why is this set to FT2000? Well, you know what? The truth is that it does not have a FTDX3000 configuration. So with lots of playing and messing around, uh, I figured out that I could use the FT D, uh, the FT2000 and it would work fine. So select for my radio model up at the top, I'm selecting the Yesu FT2000. I'm also saying that I want USB digital, right, when it drops into that mode. Now, my enhanced COM port for this particular setup is COM14. That is for my FTDX3000. Uh, the baud rate is 38400, and I have RTS and DTR both unchecked. Now, the push to talk port optional. Um, I can pretty much set this to any of the FT uh, models here. I am going to set it to the FT991A. Does it really matter? Okay. But if I set it to something that isn't a COM port or that is a COM port, it's going to try to use that. Or if I tell it it's external, it's not going to allow the radio to be keyed by the uh, Yesu FT2000 configuration. So I need it to be some sort of FT device. Doesn't matter which of the two. Okay. Uh, let's click on update. All right. It's going to close everything. Let's go ahead and open that all back up. Uh, now, let's go down here, and we are going to be dealing with the settings in VARA and VARA sound card. So, in this particular case, my USB serial devices are 3 USB audio, right? Microphone and speaker for 3 USB audio. Okay, that is for the FTDX 3000. Now, a um, little word to the wise. If you have multiple radios hooked up to multiple USB ports at the same time, you need to figure out which one is which and all that. The easiest way to do that is, uh, believe it or not, have them both on. Reach your hand over to the power supply. Not the power button on the radio, but the power supply. We need to cut all power going into the radio and turn it off. Doesn't matter which one uh, that you shut off. Just you'll see that one's COM ports and that one's USB audio disappear in the device manager. Okay? So just word to the wise on that. All right? And then now you know what you're setting up for. Uh, in here... You can set your DB, okay? Um, it says to have your ALC at a third level or um, uh, thir one third of the meter's full span before it goes into red. Look, between you, me, and the wall, I think that's too hot. Uh, if it's just barely going into the ALC, that's okay. But you go much more than that, you're going to start to have splatter. Uh, and you really don't want that, right? So... Let's uh, let's just say that tune your output digital volume to a level to where it is just right where it's about to have the ALC turn on. Okay, so that's set up. I'm going to close that. Let's go back to here. Next thing I need to do is I need to go to my channel selection and I need to click on Update via Internet, and this thing's going to go download everything off the Internet and all that good stuff, and it's going to allow me to re, uh, uh, re, re compile the basic path reliability and path quality estimates that are done based on uh, the uh, solar flux, okay? Now... I am going to go over here to XEH, uh, XE2HS, which is a station in Mexico that I have good reliability connecting to. So I'm going to turn the audio up so you can hear this whole exchange. It's going to be a little annoying, uh, but it can't be as annoying as me talking, right? Let's hit start.
Got him. We had no email, but we did make a connection with this. So, hey guys, um, I have to tell you that there really is a lot to setting all this stuff up. But I think you've got no issue in doing it. You've got the tools now. You should be set to go. If you have any questions or whatever, hey, make them in the comments down below. Oh, and by the way, I apologize for the buzz that uh, my uh, system makes into my speakers in this recording system when I'm transmitting. Uh, it can be very annoying at 20 meters, and uh, I just I need to put some toroids on some speakers. I just haven't done it. Um, anyway, with that, I'm Stu, AG6AG, and hey, do me a favor. If you like the video, subscribe, will you? Um, subscribers help me get in front of more people. And um, with that, I just want to say 73, and I hope to hear you out there on the air.